cellulose is any of several enzymes produced chiefly by fungi, bacteria, and protozoans that catalyze cellulolysis, the decomposition of cellulose and of some related polysaccharides. Specifically, the hydrolysis of the 1,4-beta-D-glycosidic linkages in cellulose, hemicellulose, lycanin, and serial beta-D-glucans. Cellulases break down the cellulose molecule into monosaccharides such as beta-glucose, or shorter polysaccharides and oligosaccharides. The name is also used for any naturally occurring mixture or complex of various such enzymes, that act serially or synergistically to decompose cellulosic material. Most mammals have only very limited ability to digest dietary fibers such as cellulose, by themselves. Important example are the cellulase produced mainly by symbiotic bacteria in ruminants like cattle and sheep and in hingeot fermenters like horses that allows them to digest the cellulose from their grass diet. Cellulases are also produced by a few other types of organisms, such as some termites. Several different kinds of cellulases are known, which differ structurally and mechanistically. Synonyms, derivatives, and specific enzymes associated with the name cellulase include endo-1, 4-beta-D-glucanase beta-D-glucan 4-glucanhydrolase, carboxymethylcellulase, avoslase, cellodextrinus, cellulase A, cellulose in AP, alkali cellulase, cellulase A3, 9.5 cellulase, and pancellase SS. Enzymes that cleave lignin are occasionally called cellulases, but this is usually considered erroneous. Types and Action Five general types of cellulases based on the type of reaction catalyzed. Endocellulases randomly cleave internal bonds at amorphous sites that create new chain ends. Exocellulases or cellobiohydrolases cleave two to four units from the ends of the exposed chains produced by endocellulase, resulting in tetrasaccharides or disaccharides, such as cellobios. Exocellulases are further classified into type I that work processively from the reducing end of the cellulose chain, and type 2, that work processively from the non-reducing end. Cellulobiases or beta-glucosidases hydrolyze the exocellulase product into individual monosaccharides. Oxidative cellulases depolymerize cellulose by radical reactions, as for instance cellulobiose dehydrogenase. Cellulose phosphorylases depolymerize cellulose using phosphates instead of water. Avoslase is almost exclusively exocellulase activity, since avosl is a highly microcrystalline substrate. Within the above types there are also progressive and non-progressive types. Progressive cellulase will continue to interact with a single polysaccharide strand, non-progressive cellulase will interact once then disengage and engage another polysaccharide strand. Cellulase action is considered to be synergistic as all three classes of cellulase can yield much more sugar than the addition of all three separately. Aside from ruminants, most animals do not produce cellulase in their bodies and can only partially break down cellulose through fermentation, limiting their ability to use energy in fibrous plant material. Structure Most fungal cellulases have a two-domain structure, with one catalytic domain and one cellulose binding domain that are connected by a flexible linker. This structure is adapted for working on an insoluble substrate, and it allows the enzyme to diffuse two-dimensionally on a surface in a caterpillar-like fashion. However, there are also cellulases that lack cellulose binding domains. These enzymes might have a swelling function. Equal cellulase complexes equals, in many bacteria, Cellulases in vivo are complex enzyme structures organized in supramolecular complexes, the cellulosomes. They contain roughly five different enzymatic subunits representing namely endocellulases, exocellulases, cellulobiases, oxidative cellulases and cellulose phosphorylases wherein only endocellulases and cellulobiases participate in the actual hydrolysis of the I squared, one of four, linkage. The cellulase complex from Trichodomorisae, for example, comprises a component labeled C1 that separates the chains of crystalline cellulose, an endoglucanase, an exoglucanase, and a beta-glucosidis. Numerous signature sequences known as docarins and coxins have been identified in the genomes of bacteria that produce cellulosomes. Depending on their amino acid sequence and tertiary structures, 
cellulases are divided into clans and families. Mechanism of cellulosis. Uses, cellulase is used for commercial food processing in coffee. It performs hydrolysis of cellulose during drying of beans. Furthermore, cellulases are widely used in textile industry and in laundry detergents. They have also been used in the pulp and paper industry for various purposes, and they are even used for pharmaceutical applications. Cellulase is used in the fermentation of biomass into biofuels, although this process is relatively experimental at present. Cellulase is used as a treatment for phytobesis, a form of cellulose bizarre found in the human stomach. Measurement of cellulase, as the native substrate, cellulose, is a water-insoluble polymer, traditional reducing sugar assays using this substrate cannot be employed for the measurement of cellulase activity. Analytical scientists have developed a number of alternative methods. Equals viscometric substrates equals, a viscometer can be used to measure the decrease in viscosity of a solution containing a water-soluble cellulose derivative such as carboxymethyl cellulose upon incubation with a cellulase sample. The decrease in viscosity is directly proportional to the cellulase activity. While such assays are very sensitive and specific for endocellulase, they are limited by the fact that it is hard to define activity in conventional enzyme units. Equal cell oligosaccharides substrates equals, the lower DP cello oligosaccharides are sufficiently soluble in water to act as viable substrates for cellulase enzymes. However, as these substrates are themselves reducing sugars, they are not suitable for use in traditional reducing sugar assays because they generate a high blank value. However their cellulase-mediated hydrolysis can be monitored by HPLC or IC methods to gain valuable information on the substrate requirements of a particular cellulase enzyme. Equals reduced cell oligosaccharides substrates equals, cello oligosaccharides can be chemically reduced through the action of sodium borohydride to produce their corresponding sugar alcohols. These compounds do not react in reducing sugar assays but their hydrolysis products do. This makes borohydride reduced cello oligosaccharides valuable substrates for the assay of cellulase using traditional reducing sugar assays such as the Nelson Samogi method. Equals dyed polysaccharide substrates equals, these substrates can be subdivided into two classes, insoluble chromogenic substrates, and insoluble cellulase substrates such as AZCLHE cellulose absorbs water to create gelatinous particles when placed in solution. This substrate is gradually depolymerized and solubilized by the action of cellulase. The reaction is terminated by adding an alkaline solution to stop enzyme activity and the reaction slurry is filtered or centrifuged. The color in the filtrate or supernatant is measured and can be related to enzyme activity. Soluble chromogenic substrates, a cellulase sample is incubated with a water-soluble substrate such as azu-CM cellulose. The reaction is terminated and high molecular weight, partially hydrolyzed fragments are precipitated from solution with an organic solvent such as ethanol or methoxyethanol. The suspension is mixed thoroughly, centrifuged, and the color in the supernatant solution is measured. With the aid of a standard curve, the enzyme activity can be determined. Equals enzyme coupled reagents equals. Recently, New reagents have been developed that allow for the specific measurement of endocellulase. These methods involve the use of functionalized oligosaccharide substrates in the presence of an ancillary enzyme. In the example shown, a cellulase enzyme is able to recognize the trisaccharide fragment of cellulose and cleave this unit. The ancillary enzyme present in the reagent mixture then acts to hydrolyze the fragment containing the chromophore or fluorophore. The assay is terminated by the addition of a basic solution that stops the enzymatic reaction and deprotonates the liberated phenolic compound to produce the phenol 8 species. The cellulase activity of a given sample is directly proportional to the quantity of phenol 8 liberated which can be measured using a spectrophotometer. The acetyl functionalization on the non-reducing end of the trisaccharide substrate prevents the action of the ancillary I squared glucosidase on the parent substrate. References Further reading See also, Cellulose 1, for beta cellobiosidis, an efficient cellulase, Zafer M, Ahmed S, Khan M I, Jamal A.
recombinant expression and characterization of a novel endoglucanase from Bacillus subtilis in Escherichia coli. Mobile Rep 41, 3292 a Euro 302 doi, 10.1007 per second 11033-014-3192-8. PMID 24,493,451